Hey y'all, it's Wai Chang. This is the first episode of our dedicated YouTube Q&A series where we answer questions that our patrons have given us, except none of the people in that tier have given us any questions, which I took as permission to do whatever we wanted and make up our own. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Let's get into it. Let's not say let's get into it. That's such a cliche. What is a series you love that says a lot about you? For me, it's a Gretzko because it shows that I am a weeaboo who is also a boomer. Mine is Sailor Moon because it says that I am a child of the 90s. I love pretty transformations and fighting evil. Shiro Bako because it's an anime about making anime that's off the beaten path, which tells you that I love shows about the craft of things and that I have an allergy to hype. <laughs> Because it's an obscure show. Well, I'm kind of with you there on um, liking more obscure shows. This one that I'll name isn't exactly obscure. Well, actually, it's not really obscure at all. It's Madoka. It deals with darker and deeper topics. And uh, usually when I want to talk to somebody, it, I never want to talk about, you know, things that are super like lighthearted or uh, surface level. I always want to go deep. I know that probably sounds a little pretentious. No, not at all. But, but I don't know. I like <laughs> stuff that's a little bit darker, something that looks really cute on the surface. But the more you you learn about it, the more you get to know it, you realize there's something a little fucked up. And it also has a little bit of budding sexuality, that kind of stuff. And when I first watched the show, that just meant a lot to me as somebody who was really trying to figure out her identity at the time. I feel like my love of Dragon Ball Z probably says the most about me in that I talk a big game about all these social issues and shit that, uh, behind the anime that I watch when ultimately I'm just trying to see fights. I can analyze all I want, but I just want to see, I just like to see violence. Code Geass. Huh. <laughs> what does that say about you? I am constantly struggling between choosing to either become a mass vigilante or infiltrating the system from the inside and doing it right <laughs> in order to... <laughs> Topple it or something. I thought you were going to say that you had trouble choosing between horniness and violence. Actually, no. That's actually very easy to unite as one. It depends on your kinks. Learning mm -hmm. a lot about you. It doesn't help that okay. I'm literally wearing like my dominatrix. Uh, you know what? I don't see that, so I'm just going to visualize that. <laughs> For sure, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, mostly on the basis that I relate hard, not to people having stando power or, you know, like magic breathing, but to, you know... Like the, the hanging out with your friends. Maybe I'm just hurting though because I just missed that entirely thanks COVID. <laughs> uh, but no, it just has this charm to it, that acquired taste charm. And I feel like that's what talking to me is like. You're into those themes of camaraderie, mm -hmm. but you're also into stuff that's out there and that has a sense of humor. Right. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Next question. You are at a bodega to pick up a sweet, a savory, and a drink. What do you get? Sour gummy bears is my sweet. Hot Cheetos is my savory. And Sidra Mundet, green apple soda, is my drink. You can get all of that if you go for tequila, because then you can make yourself a margarita and put some salt on the rim. Okay, but... It's sweet, it's savory. And it's a drink. But and it's a drink. You're not normally getting tequila from a bodega, are you? Why not? Are, are you... <laughs> What is the definition of savor? I never really like chips, like, like or a chip sandwich, or a, yeah, or like a sandwich, or like hot pickle or something. That is a wide contrast. <laughs> <laughs> chip sandwich, hot pickle, veggie sticks and hummus. Oh, fancy. but it has to be sweet chili garlic hummus because that is the stuff. Morning time, I'm going to sausage egg and cheese. Early afternoon, I'm gonna go with a bag of zaps. Voodoo chips. Lay's barbecue. It tastes like someone asking for a bite and me saying no when I was in high school and feeling that power trip. <laughs> barbecue sauce is the taste of power, gotcha. Yes. All right. That, yeah, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> I mean, okay, fine. In a, in a bodega, i probably go for a beer. Okay, a beer. Or I'll try to find rum if there's okay. good rum, because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm choosy with my rum. Rum is also kind of sweet. It's made out of sugar cane, so. Okay, these are all drinks. What is- I'm sorry, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, I already know Kurt's answer to that one. It's Martinelli's. <laughs> Martinelli's sparkling <laughs> apple cider. The concept of money means nothing to me sometimes. I would get one of those 
cold canned coffees with oat milk, but maybe a decaf one if it's at midnight or one of those little Starbucks frappuccinos. I remember when those things came out when I was younger, people could not stop drinking them. I drank them all the time in college until one morning I was like drinking it at my job and I'm like, this is all just sugar. I don't even think yep. there's any coffee in here. <laughs> I've been like dr drowning myself in harmless coconut water recently. That stuff is a hangover for cure in a bottle. Yeah, for my sweet, they were those like apple rings, the ones that cost like 99 cents are, are definitely uh, terrible for you. Oh, see, I thought you meant like the dried apple ones. You meant like the gummies. <laughs> yeah, I meant the gummies. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't really do the dehydrated. It just feels like a weird in-between space for me. Like if you want candy, just get candy. I think it is a candy from the UK, it's called a crunchy bar. Yeah. It's just the perfect texture. I'm all about textures when it comes to food. When you bite down on it, it's really light and crispy and sweet. Whenever I go to a bodega, I will buy like two of them. Granted that they have it, they usually only have them at bougie bodegas. You know what Kurt said? What? For his sweet? A fruit, typically raspberries, because raspberries are the best fruit. Uh... It That's is. what's bougie to me. <laughs> <laughs> they're good, but yeah, they're also overpriced. Kurt is a psychopath. I feel like he's definitely... <laughs> if he hasn't already, I feel like Kurt is definitely going to murder somebody someday. And I really feel bad for that person to have to go down as the person that Kurt murdered. Kurt is from Ohio, isn't he? I feel like there's some ser serial killer, like Jeffrey Dahmer's from somewhere in the Midwest. I don't know serial killer origin stories like that, but like, yeah, just for the sake of this narrative, Jeffrey Dahmer is from Ohio. <laughs> this yeah. narrative that you're pushing onto him. Jeffrey Dahmer is from wherever Kurt is from. Right. Pick three BTB crew people, so that includes hosts and creative staff. Uh, you need one to teach your kids, one to have your back in a fight, and one to take home to meet your folks. Not necessarily in a romantic way, it can just be like someone you think would make a good impression on your folks. People were getting way too into it. <laughs> mm, uh, let's see, y'all are trash, so uh, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> one to teach your kids, yeah. all right. Well, definitely none of the hosts, <laughs> sorry. I think we're all a little too chaotic and dangerous to be around children. I definitely don't want Kurt teaching my kids. I feel like that is like... <laughs> Oh, that no. feels like a like a crime, like ir irresponsible parenting. You do it. You do it. Okay. Professor, you do it. Professor it's Doye. The, see, Professor Doye, it's in the name. He would teach my kids, and I would approve of that curriculum. I feel like Cristal comes up comes across with the like unexpected knowledge pretty frequently. So I I feel like I would go Cristal. But also you come through with the like very expected knowledge pretty frequently. And because you're asking me the questions, I didn't like consider you before I said Cristal. I feel like I would have you teach my kids. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think Adrian would be a good person to teach kids. Okay. I know he loves children. I know that guy wants to have a baby. Wow. He probably knows anime more than at least half of us combined. Maybe not you. You know a f***ing lot about anime. I ho is he teaching them anime or is he just teaching them anything? <laughs> I guess I didn't think about it that far. Well, but... I'm going to go with Adrian for teaching okay. kids. Okay. Definitely, I'm going to say Jacob. Jacob has this nice, like, fatherly energy that is also like the fun uncle energy. It's like the fun teacher that you don't remember anything they taught you, but like they like would like have normal conversations with you after class and like would hand you candy every once in a while. That's Jacob, like just mm. base cool guy. What was the other one? To have my bite in a, uh, to have my back in a fight, Crystal. Okay. I know that girl may look kind of sweet and innocent, but she could kick some ass. If she saw that I was in trouble, she would take off her earrings, run over, and have my back in a second. I also bet she's got some secret sort of jujutsu moves that she hasn't told anybody about. Cause anytime I talk to her, I learn just a little bit more about her. So if she knew some like crazy karate moves, I would not be surprised in, this, in the slightest. <laughs> she can scrap. <laughs> I would say you. <laughs> I feel like okay. we could do it like Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon. Oh, where you do all the work and I do nothing. Actually, I'm Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't think that was clear. I throw the rose. I show up late. <laughs> and then I congratulate you. I mean, I am good at throwing things. 
And you already have a wand, so. And I have a wand. First to come to mind is Yodoi, but I feel like he would like hurt me in the fight based off our rapport. <laughs> as reluctantly as I say, I feel like it's gonna be Kurt. I feel like we just have complimentary fighting styles and I'm, I regret saying that already, but like. I've burned too many bridges to answer this properly. I, I think that was your answer <laughs> though. I think it was Yodoi. <laughs> yeah, it's Yodoi. Yodoi is the one I would wish would back me up. I feel like there needs to be a JoJo arc about the two of you. Yeah, I would definitely be reluctant about it, like Vegeta refusing to fuse for like way too long, but it would eventually happen. I wouldn't like it, but that's just how it goes down. The only person I would introduce to my parents that would leave a good impression is Nikki, because he's a parent. You know, they're gonna bond over having to, you know, take care of kids and what that's like, and that that's responsible and shows that he's a responsible person. Nikki is like yeah. one of the most interesting people I've like met casually. Nikki has this ability to just keep the conversation going, and he has always these interesting things about him. Like, I didn't know he like owned a toy company. Like that's yeah. cool. He was definitely the guy when I first saw him, I was like, man, this dude just has it. Like I want to be friends with him. Maybe Jacob because he's the most pure. Yeah. Yeah, I know that if you take <laughs> Jacob, you're taking somebody back who's definitely safe and kind and won't throw any curveballs. Probably Alex. I feel like she would like my parents and they would probably like her. And also it only slightly factors in that like, I feel most comfortable bringing black people around my parents because they're weird like that. That is fair. That is completely fair. I get where you're coming from. Yeah, not to take away from Alex's genuine deserving of that role. Then again, I am such trash that literally all of y'all could make me look good. So I would just as happily bring you, bring you Doria or bring Kurt or bring Doria. Never mind, I won't bring Kurt. No, I'm okay, not wow. <laughs> Rapid fire round. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Favorite Boro. What? Favorite what? Boro? Yeah. Oh, of New York? Yeah. Manhattan. Oh, of New York. <laughs> Everyone always gets stumped on this one, yeah. I thought you were saying B-O-R-O. -O. I'm like Boro. I'm like, I don't know why I thought Boro. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, is that a Spanish word? Uh, no. <laughs> Brooklyn, I have to say that. <laughs> Okay. Legally obligated. I, I mean, Brooklyn. A close second is Harlem. I know it's not a borough, but like, if I had to live anywhere else. I'm gonna go with the classic Manhattan. I like it when th stuff is just sticking together and it's just a stinking human mess. Speaking of stink, uh, uh, favorite smell? New shoes. You hype beast. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, am I wrong? They smell good. Almonds. I don't love the taste of almonds, but I love the smell. Sandalwood. I like spices and earthiness. Egusi, egusi soup, Nigerian food. Favorite YouTube snack? Like a YouTuber? No, no, no. Oh, well, oh. I, I didn't mean like a YouTuber oh. you think oh, is a okay. snack. <laughs> but it Salted egg yolk cookies. Those are really good. I'm glad you know I about those. I am in those. love with those. They are the perfect texture, consistency, perfect balance of salty and sweet. I guess like a kettle corn, like a sweet kettle yeah. corn sounds pretty good. I'm gonna double back and say raspberries. Kurt is a psychopath. Platanitos oh, or I tostones. Love those. Yeah, yeah, I love tostones. Last question for the rapid fire round. Favorite BTB inside joke or reference? Dolphin. <laughs> Do oh, God. <laughs> love comes in all sizes. I feel like the majority of our viewership <laughs> won't know about that, but if you saw our, like, if you're on our Patreon, plug, 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 and you saw our, like, special gift to our early supporters, you'll know what we're talking about. There's um, a reason why that's the tier for the biggest baller. Big ass brain. That's it, I will provide no context. But Kurt knows. I love to refer to the unholy trinity a lot, but I guess nowadays <laughs> I really love uh, put it in my mouth from the botcast. Yep. <laughs> this is also one. just gonna be getting people to go to our botcast so they can learn what uh, put it in my mouth is. I can't enjoy Angela Anaconda. Unfortunately, Dolphin Tick goes ahead of that, so which gotcha. is sad. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What's one piece of advice you learned this year that you want to share with our bot squad? Just have patience. There were so many times this year where I was just so down on myself and upset because I was like, when's this finally going to happen? When are all my troubles going to be solved? When am I going to be able to move? When am I going to be able to get this money? This, that, and the third. But then you have to like step back and really think like, I'm going to get it. Take comfort in the fact that these things will happen and just... Be more patient. <laughs> Things will fall into place eventually, and everything will be okay. Everybody else is probably gonna say something silly, but I felt like being candid there. I feel like I'm gonna try to come up with like a philosophical way to say this. Just don't take work just for the money. Do it the way you wanna do it, and don't let anybody else tell you how it's supposed to go. You bring all these people into your circle, and they start telling you 
how to keep doing shit the way you were doing it when you want to move on. Make space and do work for yourself and do shit that you want to do. Learn how to say no. I'm still working on that. It's okay to, to trust other people to have your back as long as you guys are on the same page. And that applies to both work and personal life. Like, don't be afraid to just, you know, work it out with someone. I think, uh, I think that's something I needed considering quarantine and everything. You know that saying of life throws lemons at you, make lemonade? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Given that uh, we, <laughs> we birthed the bot from the wreckage of the prior robot, that wisdom still holds true, except we also have to remember that lemons are actually man-made, that the world didn't have lemons and we created them, so we create our own systems and drama. So yeah, uh, make some lemonade, throw some tequila at it. That's all. That's all? That's all, yeah. Because oh, well, there's like four people. To go. Yeah, no, to thank yeah. you. We're all, we're all hosts. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so polite. And there you have it. As always, we want to give a special shout out to our patrons, Sugar Joe, Andrew M, Critical225, Kyle, and Eric Totorapatsu. I hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much for helping us finish out 2020 strong. And may the next year be even better. I'm Wai Chang. This has been Beyond the Bot. Have a good end of the year. <laughs>